Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all so much for attending today. Um, this is the second session of three sessions that we're um, doing as a series. It's called Aging Well. Um, we're thrilled to be partnering with these folks and their organizations. My name is Diane Braddock, and I'm the Work-Life Consultant for Human Resources. I'm joined today by my colleague, Amy Layton. Um, she's our program coordinator. Um, she is helping um, with uh, technology and our remote audience today. So if there's any questions, um, feel free to um, raise a hand. Um, this is a little bit informal, but at the same time we are videoing the session, so I want you to be aware of that. And then we'll do a, our presentation. There's the four panelists today, and then for the second hour, if there are specific questions, they're going to hang around just a little while. You're welcome to ask more specific questions. So you might want to say, well, what does a work-life office do in Tompkins County? We provide these programs, a lot of consults, consultations, referral services to other kinds of programs within Cornell, and we work with our faculty, staff, retirees, and also students with dependents on issues pertaining to life transitions, self-care, caregiving for children, elders, workplace flexibility, and a whole lot more. So just a few housekeeping things. Please be sure to sign in. Um, the restrooms are out the door to the right on the atrium. And then afterwards, we're going to be sending an evaluation. Um, and that's going to be sent afterwards. And we really appreciate your feedback and also your ideas and suggestions for other issues or topics that you might be interested in. So um, for those participating online, um, you may, you're welcome to submit questions to the Q&A or the chat feature. And Amy will give us a sign and let us know that there are questions. So with this, um, we really, um, this is all about you, your questions, or the people particularly that you may be caring for. And so in learning about resources and services that are offered in Tompkins County, and those similar kinds of services may be offered in other areas as well. So we'll let the panelists introduce themselves, talk a little bit about their organizations, and so on. And then um, at the end, we'll have them highlight again how best to get in touch with them if you have additional questions. Anything to get started? Otherwise, we're going to get started with Carrie. Come on up. <laughs> All right. Hi, my name is Carrie Johnson. I am a wellness and fitness specialist for Cornell Wellness, and I'm also the coordinator for the Healthy Living Program on campus, which focuses mainly on retirees and group fitness classes, social programming as well as um, wellness talks, lectures, and workshops on prevention towards well-being. So I want to talk to you today about aging. We're all aging. Even babies are aging. So I was like, you know, I feel like I could have some real job security if I begin my focus on active older adults. So I've been doing this for 18 years. Um, my degree is in integrative healthcare and exercise science, and I'm also uh, a part-time student at Cornell uh, focusing on in international health management. So it's kind of my life's work. So I hope you take something away for today and remember that I am always on campus and I'm here as a resource to you as part of the benefits program of Cornell University. So again, we're all aging. It doesn't matter what phase or stage you are in your life. And a main thing that we even saw in the comments of what people posted coming to this lecture was, how do I stay in my home? How am I able to stay in my home as I age? And one of the most valuable resources to yourself is exercise. One of the things that is going to be prohibitive towards you as you age is if you are not strong enough or you become too weak or frail that you are unable to care for yourself. Now, I'm not going to tell anybody here that they need to go out and become a triathlete after today. Okay, We're going to make talk about some small changes that you can make in your daily life that will have a big effect on your being. Now, most people, when they think about exercise, they think of the aesthetics, you know, the, having a nice body. But if exercise was easy, we'd all be walking around looking like Hercules, right? But that's not happening. So what I want you to take away from today is 
thinking about how strong you are right now as you sit here listening and knowing that at any time you choose, you can become 50% stronger than you are right now. Does it take work? Of course it does. Are there resources available to help you maintain those goals? Absolutely. So kind of to get away from the aesthetics of exercise, I also want you to think about how one single workout at a level that is comfortable for you, up to 30 minutes, will have a huge effect on your body because it's going to release three neurotransmitters. So noradrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin are going to be released into your body within 30 minutes. All you have to do is elevate your heart rate a little bit, start breathing heavier, and get a little sweaty. Three things for three neurotransmitters. What are those neurotransmitters going to do for your body? What they're gonna do is they're gonna expand and protect your, free front, your prefrontal cortex and your hippocampus. What are those things? There are two main portions in your brain that are targeted during aging. Not just the natural decline that we see in aging, but it's also targeted by incurable uh, brain degenerative diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's. So even if you have a um, genetic disposition towards these brain de degenerative diseases, by including exercise in your life, you can begin to protect your brain and be preventative towards those aging signs. Another thing that we see um, in the aging community is as we age, the first things to go are balance and coordination. And we know that loss of balance and loss of coordination leads to falls. And if falls was considered a disease, it would be known as an epidemic. So you can start by taking the initiative today and just think about starting an exercise program. We wanna aim for three to four times a week of 30 minutes of exercise. Now that can be anything you want. You know, it can be going for a walk, it can be riding your bike, it can be going bowling, um, or you can join group fitness classes and social programs like the Healthy Living Program. You can join the YMCA. Uh, they have dollar days on Thursdays where you just pay a dollar as a senior and you're able to use the entire facility. So, um, so not only does exercise have an aesthetic effect, it also has a preventative effect and it protects your brain from degenerative incurable diseases. So another aspect I was talking about earlier was being able to maintain your strength and how we can become 50% stronger from where you are right now sitting right here. Um, strength training also helps maintain your coordination and your balance which will then, again, prevent that epidemic of falls. And I know a lot of you are sitting here going, well, that's great, but like, how do I start? Where do I begin? My job is to be a benefit to you. All you have to do is give me a call or send me an email. Can I see a show of hands of maybe some people that I see in this room that have worked with me before? Yes. So twice a year, I offer something to um, the wellness through the wellness program known as a senior fitness test. So twice a year, I offer a fitness test for people that are 50 and older. Your first test is your initial benchmark. It gives us a really great idea of where you currently are on that day. Every six months, I offer the test so that we can see where you've made improvements or maybe use some places where we need to make some effort towards. So at any time, you can sign up for the senior fitness test. At any time, you can have a free life coaching. Maybe you're transitioning into retirement, experiencing the loss of a loved one, dealing with some other things in life. You can also have a nutrition consultation with me and a fitness consultation. You do not need to buy fancy clothes or 
purchase equipment, or even a gym membership. I can make a program that is specific for your wants and needs, whether you want to do them in your home, uh, in your room. I recently just got off a, a Zoom interview with somebody who's in Japan, and she was like, this is my space in my apartment. I need you to give me a workout routine. I can do that. Whatever you're working with, I will make something that is perfect for you, that will be doable and accessible to help you meet those needs of exercising three to four times a week to help get stronger so you can take care of yourself longer and to really help prevent those degenerative brain diseases. Thank you very much. Can you hear me now? <laughs> All right, good. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Jones, and my company is called Jones Solutions. Um, I work and perform residential remodeling for accessibility. Um, I'm a, an occupational therapist by trade, uh, and I worked in the out in the acute rehab area for several years, uh, and found that the four walls started to close in on me. Uh, and I started doing home care where a the therapist comes out to your house and we work with you within your four walls. Um, during that time, I always found that there's so many quick and simple modifications that can be performed in a home to make a person be able to remain in their home or remain safe uh, that I started to explore construction and real estate in that different market uh, and really fell in love with residential accessibility. Um, Re, excuse me, <clears throat> performing rehab for folks, your goals are often three and four months and five months. And I'm kind of a quick guy. I like to have instant gratification, if you will. Uh, and with remodeling, I could take someone who at one point wouldn't be able to bathe or shower, remodel their bathroom, and then have them be able to be independent or bathe by themselves. Uh, and so that's just what I've been developing over the last, let's see, I graduated in 2002, and this is what I've been developing and leaning towards all of that time. Uh, for a handful of years, I did consulting for large loss insurance companies where uh, young families or worker would fall and become paralyzed. And so I would travel the country and use an architect program to draw up their house and then create plans to uh, remodel their home for accessibility. And these are young folks uh, or older folks as well. Uh, but the goal is to design a space that's available to be able to use if you're using a wheelchair. Um, and I called it, uh, I get to do kind of the uh, home makeover, um, but with a large loss insurance company <clears throat> money. So we got to do elevators and all sorts of extreme home makeover types of renovations. Uh, but I also got to work on the other side where we have to be budget friendly remodel or budget friendly solutions. And I think maybe that's the first thing to say. We could talk all day about residential accessibility. We could talk all day about ramps or just entry. Um, and so that's something that you can re reach out to me for is, hey, Scott, I have a question about X, Y, and Z. Um, and I can come out and work with you at your home. And that's probably my first point that I, I really encourage folks to do is take control now to plan for your future. Um, we're all aging. Uh, we're all getting older every moment. I think that's a great point. Uh, and oftentimes life surprises us with injuries, illnesses, things like that, that just can come and go. I can walk out the stairs here and, and well, there's no stairs, but I can walk out and step off the curb and break an ankle. And I have to look at my house and go, oh boy, how am I going to get in? How am I going to be? It can affect anyone, little people, all the way up to us full grown adults. Uh, and so I, I, I like to say, how many people have spoke with their financial planner this year or what plan to probably everybody talks with your tax guy or financial planner a little bit. Your second greatest source of wealth is in your home. And so I encourage you to go out and talk with your preferred contractor, your handyman on, Hey, what are the ways for me to get into my house? Is there something that I could do to plan ahead that would help me access my house? Because when you get injured or you're in a hospital, they say, guess what, on Friday you have to go home. I don't have those solutions in place or I don't have a plan in place. Then you end up with good, cheap, and fast. Those are your three options for getting a solution. 
you can only pick two of those solutions. And so your results aren't gonna be that ideal outcome that you may be looking for. So again, I encourage you to take some time and speak with your contractor, speak with a professional who has the skill in looking at residential accessibility. Um, the other kind of point about accessibility, residential accessibility, as soon as you say that word accessibility, what do we imagine? Stainless steel, sanitary, the smell of Clorox, it just doesn't feel like home anymore. And, and I'm gonna say remodeling for accessibility, I just like to say now smart remodeling because there are so many great products on the market uh, that can make your bathroom or your kitchen or your entryway look aesthetically pleasing and have invisible uh, solutions for accessibility. You don't have to have a ramp anymore. One of the great um, solutions that I help folks implement is called berming, where a berm helps you get into your house. Rather than a, a ramp or an elevator or a lift, you can bring dirt up to your house, and it all depends on the type of house, and then pour a concrete sidewalk right up to the door. This is a solution that's no maintenance. This is a solution that doesn't have that visual impact of, ooh, somebody is using a wheelchair there, or somebody's having trouble with ambulation. It's a permanent solution that doesn't affect the resale value of your house. And um, I think that's another great point is these remodels now are becoming much more prevalent and actually desirable in the housing market. So if you're saying, you know what, I think I'm gonna stay here for a few years, but I don't wanna have this sort of a solution in my house because it's gonna affect the value of my home. You don't have to worry about that anymore because these solutions are adding value to your home. And that's probably another great point is that uh, the real estate market, there's two areas that help um, with the resale value of your house and where you can regain the most of your investment. And that's in a bathroom remodel and that's in a kitchen remodel. And those are the two places that are really essential to being able to remain in your home as we age. Uh, so it's, it's a wise, it's a, a smart place to uh, invest your money. And the thing that I'll finish with for you guys is that when you say, I'm going to go on a vacation, do you just hop in the car and drive out and figure out where you're going as you go? I mean, maybe some of the free spirits do do that. Uh, but oftentimes, not often, most of the time, we have a plan. We have a roadmap for where we're going and how we're going to get there. This goes back to talking with your remodeler, your contractor, myself, is that drawing up a plan or a set of plans for what will be your solution is the first step in helping you get to creating a solution in your project. And when I say a plan or a roadmap, a, 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 pardon me, a set of plans will help you be able to solicit other contractors. If you say, listen, I know that this is what I want, and you can then solicit three or four different contractors, you know that you're gonna be able to get a price or a bid on what you want. It's comparing apples to apples. But if you call Joe the elevator guy, and then Steve the vertical platform lift guy, and then Robert the ramp guy, you gotta bet that Steve's gonna be giving you an elevator quote, the other guy's gonna be giving you a lift quote, and the other person will be giving you a ramp quote, and you're not able to easily compare the product or the solution that you're, you're getting. So having a plan or roadmap or a scope of work uh, for your house will help you be able to choose and, and get what you need to age in place. Um, I'm happy, obviously, I can go on and on and ramble about accessibility and the different products and, and, and items for your home. Um, and we can talk later about the temporary solutions that you can implement, the more permanent solutions. Uh, and I'm happy to answer all those questions as we go on with the panel here today. Um, and I have my business cards up there, so please feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email if you have more questions about any of the home accessibility needs you might have. Hi, everybody. Thanks for letting me come back. I was here last week, and I'm delighted to be back again. Um, for those who weren't here last time, my name is Elena Flash, and it is my great honor to serve as the first executive executive director of Love Living at Home, the village that's here in Tompkins County. Um, last time I did give a little explanation of what a village is, but for those who were not here last week or for those folks uh, on the web who are not with us last week, I'll tell you a little bit about the village and then we'll talk about you and your home. <clears throat> Love Living at Home is a village following a national model 
of organizations like ours around the country. There are about 400 of them around the country. It started, the movement started about 16 years ago. Um, but I do want to emphasize that each village is wholly local. We were started by folks right here in Tompkins County, your neighbors, um, not controlled by any national organization, but we follow the national model. Each village is unique, responding to its own community. Locally, um, we feel that we want to be a way for older people to connect to one another and to the larger community while living in their own homes and apartments. You might call it living independently together. And we do this by building a mutually supportive network of neighbors helping neighbors. So the village doesn't have any bricks and mortar. It's not an actual structure. It's really built with relationships and connections. And we do this with social activities, volunteer services, and connections to resources in the community, like the folks right here at the panel. For our social activities, we have gatherings in members' homes. We have interest groups, a coloring group that meets once a month for a couple of hours and shares a snack and a beverage, a needle craft group, and the Ogos, the old guys who go out. Um, we have a behind the scenes program that gets people out to, to experience local resources like the piggery or the Cornell Dairy Store where of course they enjoyed ice cream. Uh, and they have a tour that shows them something about the venue or the organization that you might not know if you just went in as a member of the public. And we provide ride shares to all of those activities so that folks who don't drive, don't want to drive at night, don't want to go alone can call and we connect them with someone else who's going. So those social connections are really important. And then the ride share leads me to talk about our volunteer services. We offer three types of services, transportation, door to door, anywhere in Tompkins County for any purpose, not just medical. So we drive people to the hairdresser. We've got somebody right now who's getting a ride to get her nails done. Um, we can drive you to visit a friend. We've taken people to have lunch with their friends. They don't drive, but they want to go have lunch at a local restaurant with friends. Um, and then we have a home maintenance service, which I'm going to talk quite a bit about. And we also have a personal well-being service, which is friendly visiting, um, running errands, helping with some home organization, cleaning out a closet, some of those little things that are just help you stay connected. So today's topic is how do I stay in my home? And uh, I couldn't agree more with Scott about the importance of planning. If you want to stay in your home as you age, you absolutely have to be thinking ahead. And that is very much what this village model is all about, taking charge of your future and planning ahead. Um, you wanna stay in your home, it's one of your most valuable resources, but you also have to be able to take care of it. And what our volunteer services offer is help taking care of your home when your body says, don't do that. And even though Carrie might help you stay 50% stronger, I love that, I have a new goal, um, uh, you still need to be thoughtful about what you do. So what do our volunteers do? They change those hard to reach light bulbs. They can unplug a toilet or crawl underneath a sink to figure out why it's not draining properly. They can help you with some leaf raking. We had one woman who rakes her own leaves, but then putting that big pile in those big bags was just too much for her to lift. So she did the raking and the volunteer just helped her bag it and get it to the street side. Um, we can uh, change water softener filters that are too hard to reach or too hard for you to manage to un twist the whatever, I'm not a maintenance person, I don't know what a wrench is, but whatever that wrench does. Um, uh, so I think what you're hearing is that we do little things, you know, maybe clean a kitchen window. We have one person who's called to have, um, she can mop her floor just fine, but she can't get down on the floor. And you know how the mop leaves a ring around the edge of the floor? So the volunteer went and cleaned the edge of the floor. And the little things that help you keep up your home but that your body is saying, mm, maybe not anymore. So I thought maybe a few stories would be of interest 
Um, uh, and I do want to tell the first one about someone who lives in an apartment and relates to a little bit of the things that Scott was talking about. Um, he's had a fall and a surgery and has to go home. So the volunteer from our home maintenance crew picked up the shower bench and the toilet commode, put them in, and then moved the furniture, rolled up the rugs so that she could navigate in her apartment with a wheelchair and a walker. So even in an apartment, there might be used to have planning <laughs> and some volunteer help. We have another person also um, in her, she might be 90, upper 80s, um, who adamantly, repeatedly declares, I want to live under my house with my, ro my roof. I want to live under my roof with my rules. Um, so she calls and um, she has a lovely fireplace furnace, fireplace, you know, insert, and it's working just fine in terms of the heat, but the light isn't on, so the logs aren't glowing. And it's kind of annoying to be sitting there without that. So she calls us, we send the volunteer, he finds, moves it so he can get to the panel, get, finds out what kind of light bulb, goes to the store, gets the replacement bulb, and puts it back in. So now she's warm and cozy. And that's the sort of thing that your body says, I can't do it, or you can't find it, or you don't know how to do it, but it's annoying to have it there. Those little things that you know just are not making you feel comfortable in your home anymore. It's not a safety issue, but it, it's something that is important and weighing on you. So several months later, she had a medical challenge and we were in regular communication. We were helping her with some errands and just staying in close contact. And again, she's frustrated because she had bought 10 bags of mulch and just didn't have the energy to spread them on the garden path that connects her yard to one of the local recreational trails. And it was just bugging her. So we send the volunteer who takes half an hour to spread the mulch. <laughs> um, and now she doesn't have to be aggregated by that small home maintenance project. So um, we don't just help old folks, um, because as we've all been saying, we're all aging. We have a member who is living in a home by herself for the first time after a divorce, and our volunteers help her regularly with understanding the systems in her house. So someone went and helped her find her well and explained how the water line gets to the house. She is the person that gets help with her water softener filters. We've helped her fix a toilet and the volunteer taught her how to do it so the next time she can do it herself. Um, uh, she has a lawnmower that came with the house, but it wasn't working properly, so the volunteer went, helped her evaluate what was wrong with it, helped her get it to Agway, and gave her a lesson on how to use it. So again, really simple things, but that are gonna make a big difference for her to be able to keep up the value in that house. And, um, as you can imagine, there are times when a home maintenance project is more than what a volunteer can do. So here's how we handle that. We had someone call about an overhead door problem, and you, garage door, and you would think, well, that's not a volunteer project, and it probably wouldn't be. But the volunteer went because, as he said, well, you know, maybe the rake is just blocking the eye. <laughs> she doesn't realize it. But in fact, it was a problem. There wasn't anything blocking the safety eye, but he was able to really think it through, see what was going on, gave her very precise instructions about what to tell them was wrong with the door, so that when she calls the overhead door company, she's not gonna get bullied into getting a whole new garage door. She can say, no, I don't need a new door. I need you to fix this. So again, help in maintaining the home, staying in it as long as possible. So we don't just help women. We do have many couples who are part of our organization. And we had a gentleman call who does a lot of work in his yard, but he was having a drainage problem and he had started digging a ditch and he wanted a little bit of help, not only digging the ditch, but thinking through what would be a better solution to this drainage problem. So the volunteer went and they sat around and talked about the drainage problem, gave him some help with the shovel, and that was great. And what that reminds me of is what really this model of neighbors helping neighbors is all about. It's a throwback. It's like the neighborhood in Rome, New York, where I grew up, where all the Italians lived. 
And the men would walk around the neighborhood with one another, talking to each other about how to do a better job staking the tomato plants, how to fix that broken clothesline, what could they do so that the bean poles were growing better. And they walked around helping one another, talking to one another, supporting one another as friends, and of course taking longer than their wives thought they should. But anyway, <laughs> um, and that actually happens with our volunteers. These visits to do a home maintenance project often turns into a cup of tea or a cookie or a sit on the porch and chat for a little while because while it's really important to keep exercising and it's really important to plan ahead and organize how you're gonna keep up with your house, it's equally important, I said this last time and I'm gonna say it again, to keep up your social connections. And again, Scott mentioned this, we do a great job going to our financial planners and we all go to our doctors to talk about how we're gonna prolong our life, but keeping up those social connections is so vital particularly if you're living at home and living independently, you need to be living independently together. And our volunteer services for home maintenance and the opportunities that we have for you to volunteer <laughs> um, would really make a big difference for you in that regard. Um, and I think that's it. We'll hold for questions and I get the mic to Eileen. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Eileen Savino. I'm an outreach worker with the Tompkins County Office for the Aging. And I'd uh, like a show of hands of uh, how many people have visited our office. Okay, so we're on State Street to uh, Fortini State Street, and we are right across from Family Medicine. And uh, we're a really good place to know about and a really good place to go to. We can answer just about any question that you're going to have being, you know, having to do with being a senior citizen. And if we can't answer the question, we generally know who can and we'll, you know, set you in the right direction. The mission statement of our office is to help seniors who want to stay in their homes, stay in their homes. For people who would like to look at other housing, maybe senior housing, we can help with that also. So I'm going to talk about a couple of the things that we do, and then I'm going to talk about three core programs that help people stay in their homes. So if you'll notice um, where all the handouts are, I'm just going to show you a couple of our booklets, and they're really good booklets to have. Uh, this is a resource for caregivers. And it will tell you all sorts of things about different people who can help you, Finger Lakes Independent Center, Scott is listed in there. So it's a good book to have. This one over here is our fall prevention guide. And we talk about uh, things like Tai Chi. Where are classes for Tai Chi? And Tai Chi is one of the best things that you can do to help with your balance. Because, you know, I'm gonna, well, before I get into that, let me just show this housing booklet before I forget, because this talks about all the housing that's uh, for seniors in Tompkins County. So the three uh, programs that I'm going to talk about are the Falls Prevention, and then I'm going to talk about the PERS system, which is a personal emergency response system. You press the button and you can get help. And then I'm going to talk about our RAP program, which is a program that uh, help seniors get needed repairs in their homes. So I'm going to start off with the falls because uh, it's a really good thing to start off with. Lots of times, okay, everybody think about, you know, you're five years old and you're riding your bicycle and you're playing hopscotch and you're hanging from trees and all sorts of things and maybe trying to walk along the fence. You're not thinking about balance then, you just have it. Balance is not something that you will lose forever because you're getting older. Balance is something that you can keep if you practice at it, okay? So something like Tai Chi, does anybody, everybody here, anybody has heard of Tai Chi or took a class? Okay, so Tai Chi is a really wonderful thing because you can even do it in a chair if you cannot stand up. And I'm just gonna show you, can I stand in front of here? I'm just gonna show you, I think this is the opening move. And it's really about balance. It's not a Jane Fonda workout. And, you know, it's nothing to do with sweat or anything like that. 
but it's, it's where you're learning to keep your core strong and stand straight. And it's kind of like, it's fun and you'll be with the group. So that's great for social connection. And it's going to help you keep your balance because that is probably the most important thing that's going to help you not to fall, okay? So I believe the first move, and I'm going back, I took a class, and the first move was just like this. That's the first move. And then there's a move where you go like that, and you're going this slow, okay? So you're not jumping around, you're not doing jumping jacks. This is gonna help. So in that falls booklet that I had, <laughs> I'm losing my water, in that falls booklet, it talks about different classes and different things you can do and different modifications and Scott is uh, listed in there also. So a lot of times I'll get a call from uh, the hospital or social worker. They have somebody who's fallen and you know they've broken a leg or a hip or an ankle and they'll ask me to come on into the house and do a fall safety assessment. And I will go into the house and I will look around and um, you know, see where we can help that person be comfortable at home. So this might be grab bars. This might be, I might say, well, you know, you can use a ramp here, or, you know, you need to, let's do something with the stairs, or we need railings, or you need better lighting. So I can go in and I can give you some ideas, okay? So that's the Falls Prevention Program, and you can call me, and my cards are gonna be over there after I'm done. Second program I want to talk about is the um, RAP program, which is a program where I help seniors through our office get needed home uh, repairs. So say you're that person that uh, the hospital called about and I'm going in there and you need some grab bars and maybe you need a ramp or maybe uh, you, know, you need a new staircase or doors widened. Now I get a certain amount of money from the county, and if you get HEAP, okay, Home Energy Assistance Program, I can pay for those repairs, okay? For larger repairs, and larger repairs I mean like very big ramps, roofs, maybe a whole new bathroom redo, I can help you get grant money because I usually know where the grants are in the county. And when I say help you get grant money, it means that I don't decide whether you get the money or not. I can steer you to the right place, but there's a lot of paperwork. And sometimes that can be a bit overwhelming and you can call me and I'll help you get through the paperwork, okay? So with the program that I do, helping seniors getting smaller repairs, if you're HEAP qualified, I will pay for those grant bars. I have paid for the wood for a ramp. Um, I can pay for the materials. I use, uh, in Tompkins County, there are two organizations. One's Better Housing, and one is Ithaca Neighborhood Housing Services. They used to be totally separate, and now they are under the same director, and they are partners. Both of them, they both used to do separate home repair for seniors. And they used to do it for free. So their work, you weren't paying for labor. That was free. You just paid for the materials. So now they're together and they do both Tompkins County and the city of Ithaca. And if you're HEAP qualified, I can pay for the materials, okay? So if you are looking at large repairs or even small repairs, and you're 60 years or older, if you gave me a call, I can usually tell you where you can get some help if you need the financial help to uh, get that repair done, okay? So now I'm gonna talk about also the uh, other program that we do, which is called the Personal Emergency Response Program. And that is where you have a button, and if you need help, you press the button and you get help. Okay, this is great if you live alone. You know, if you're not, once you stop going out to work every single day, you know, people aren't expecting you somewhere. 
it's a really good kind of thing to have. You know, you're downstairs in your basement, you're doing your laundry, and you fall, and you can't get back up the stairs. Well, if you're wearing the uh, button, which I'm going to show you here, you press the button. I try to get it out. It's just a little tiny thing you wear around your neck, okay? You press the button, and what that does is it sends a signal. Well, I think I'm just going to hold it up right now. To this little machine that we have uh, put in your home and attached to your phone line, okay? And what that does, oh, and just so you know, you can talk. The, the people who are going to pick up, once you press that button, they can talk to you through here and you can answer them just by talking because they'll hear you, okay? So what happens is, before we put that machine in your house, we have your name, we have your address, and you get three responders. In other words, if you want to, um, if you're going to uh, have a fall or something like that, who do you want notified? Some people want, just call 911. Some people have daughters, sons, relatives, friends. Call my friend across the street. Call, and those are the people that would help you, okay? One of the responders should always be 911 because say one first responder, I want my son. The second responder, I want my daughter. Well, your son is on a business trip, your daughter's on a business trip. So you're going to need to have 911 at that point. You're never, once you press that button, you are never not going to get help. You will always get help, okay? So if you give the name of a couple of responders and those people aren't there, uh, Doyle Medical Monitoring, they are the company that answers when you press that button. It's not going to say, well, hey, you know, the responders aren't there. I guess tough luck. 911 would be the next uh, responder that they would call, okay? So I cannot stress enough, you know, we're talking here about planning and staying healthy. Something like this, I'm 60 years old. I go to work every day. When I am no longer, you know, expected anywhere, and I, and I, I love to dance, I swing dance, I'm active, but when no one expects me anymore, and I have a house with three levels, and if I'm in my basement and something happens, no one's going to hear me, I'm getting one of those things, okay? Because I think it's smart. It doesn't mean you're old. It means you're taking care of yourself, which is a smart thing to do, okay? So I want to talk just a little bit. Um, we also have, besides the, the device I showed you, which is the basic really great device, um, which works inside your house and around your house. So if you're outside, like in the garden or something like that, you press the button, it's still going to send a signal to the machine that's going to take over your phone line that's going to call Doyle Medical. Um, if you say, don't, say you just have a cell phone, okay? You just have cell phones now. Well, how is this going to work? There's no phone jack. I mean, what's, what's going on? Well, we still put that machine in your house, but then we add what's this thing over here, what's called the tell guard. And what that does, that's kind of like a phone jack. And it works on a higher bandwidth. So it's working on, off of cell towers on a higher bandwidth. So you do not need to have a phone plugged in to the wall or a phone jack. You can actually do this with a, a cell phone. Uh, the cost is a little bit higher because you're using, you know, whatever towers are around and you're using a higher bandwidth. So it runs about $5 more. And last but not least, what I do want to talk about also whoop, is I want to show people, I get a lot of people ask about GPS. This is a GPS device. Can everybody see that? So... What's really good about GPS, if you're somebody who likes to go walking on the trails, you're not always going to be around a lot of people downtown. This might be something you want to think about, okay? The good thing about it is that it's going to, within 25 feet, triangulate your position, and they should be able to find you. The things you do have to think about is if you're in a building and say you're on the 14th floor, it's only going to say that you're at the building. It can't say you're on the 14th floor. 
I'm sure they're going to get better and better as time goes on. But that's, you know, something to think about. Now, this is more for somebody who's pretty active outside in the community and maybe doesn't have, uh, you know, people around them all the time. So if you like to hike, that type of thing. So um, that's, oh, one last thing too. And especially in the city of Ithaca, in the city of Ithaca, they require you to have what's called a lockbox. This is what a lockbox looks like. It's kind of like a realtor box, you know, when you sell your house and, um, you know, you're, well, you haven't sold it yet, but you're gone and the realtor's showing it. They have on the door what's called the lockbox. This is the same thing. And what this does, a lot of times people will say to me, well, how are they going to get in my house? You know, because if they can't get, you press the button and uh, 911 is called and they send out people to help you. If they can't get in your house, they're breaking down the door, okay? Their, their job is to save your life. They don't care about your door or your window. They're going to get in whenever they can. If you have a lockbox, one of the things that you can do, remember I told you when you get a personal emergency response machine, we take down all your information. And if you decide on a lockbox, we put that down. A lockbox, you decide on a code. And so they can press the numbers and there's, it'll open this little box and inside would be a key to your house. And that's what these do, okay? If you go to um, Home Depot or Lowe's, $30, $35 is roughly what they are. This is not one from there, but I wanted to take this to show people because a lot of times people don't know what they look like, okay? So that's, that's about it. I'd be happy to talk to anybody who is interested, talk more about our office. We have a lot of a lot of services in our office. Uh, if you have questions on uh, Medica uh, Medicare, we have people who've taken courses and are certified to talk to you. So a lot of people, they're gonna turn 65 years old and they're, you know, it's time to sign up, what do I do? We're a great place to know about. We do friendly visiting. We do home energy assistance, HEAP. We have um, resources uh, for caregivers. We have, uh, Alzheimer's support groups. It's a really, we're on the net. You know, you can put in Tompkins County Office for the Aging and you will, you know, find out what our services are. The booklets that I showed you, you can also see them online. But we are, I, I really suggest that you come on by 214 West State Street. I think I said East before, 214 West State Street, um, right across from Family Medicine. Uh, if you come on in our office, we have tons of information. And it's, it's, you should know about us. We're a good place to know about. So that's it.